Welcome to the channel. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Join me today for yet another video related to AliExpress. But this one here is to help you guys. Now, I've had a lot of questions posted on the AliExpress videos and of course numerous other comparison videos and review videos where basically subscribers reach out and they ask, what's better, this or this, this or this, this or this, right? So for this sale, I did do a community post basically asking guys, ask me questions, what do you want to know, which one's better? I'll give you my best honest opinion, uh, of course, with the experience that we as watch reviewers have, the best value we can provide you guys, the best service we can do for you is when it comes to crunch time, which one do we think is better? So bear in mind, this is my personal opinion. Of course, I'll try and cover you know different angles and just to give you the best overall answer. So there was a few requests, uh, I had a bit of engagement, but I think we've got enough uh, to cover some of the main questions, some of the main requests. Um, they're sent around a few brands uh, and a few models. Now, unfortunately, there's not a lot of dress watches on here, not a lot of uh, field watches. Mainly, the, these are going to be dive watch questions because that's what I've had. To address that bit by bit, it will be a mix of live video here in hand, the watches that I've got personally. If I don't have a specific model, uh, I will reach out, uh, go take you over to AliExpress. Uh, but I think about 95% of the watches I'm going to talk about, I have had in my possession previously or have reviewed and I've had them for a good while. I can give you a really good overview. Now, what I will say, I have created playlists for my videos and I will check out comparisons because I have done some really detailed comparisons covering quite a lot of your, these watches. But this is going to be a little concise message. So let's get to it. I've got a bunch of watches here in front of me. So let's address the first one. Okay, so let me show you guys the first one. And um, this is a question I get asked quite often. Um, it is two different watches. Yes, one is a San Martin Sumo Homage. I believe it's the SN079. And to my right, I've got the San Martin um, MM300 Homage, the SN086. Let's show this bad boy on wrist. I'm wearing the Seiko Alpinist on this Miltap bracelet. I'll be wearing this for about a week. Um, I just can't take this off, looks so good. But anyway, back to this. So yeah, um, between them, first and foremost, yes, they are two different watches. Um, but yeah, it's still a question which I get asked often. Now, specification-wise, there's no difference between either. You know, they're both stainless steel, NH35, uh, sapphire, ceramic. They both got 120 click unidirectional bezels. Both got great um, finishing. Both have ceramic bezel inserts. You know, they've got uh, San Martin's finishing on here solid bracelets everything is great about both watches but i think it is a valid question the sumo and the m300 aren't very different in size um but this is the new version but if i bring in the proxima which i'll go into later uh, the dimensions between these two there's not a lot of difference both have 50 mil log to log both are, i believe around 44 millimeters in diameter uh, but it's just the difference here is in the thickness. This is about 15, 16 mil, if I'm not mistaken. And this is maybe around 14 uh, or 14.5. But between these two, very valid question. A 50 tile difference between both of them. They both have really good finishing. But what you do get is, in my opinion, I'd say the SNO79 is a bit more of a dressed up diver, a bit for a grown up diver. You can wear it in a lot of casual settings, uh, probably even smart settings. You can wear this definitely under a suit. It does have a jet black dial, applied dial markers, like I said, ceramic, really good functionality, good rotation on the bezel, great loom, and a very nice crown. The bracelet is really nice as well. Um, compare that to this, you know, this is clearly, as you can see, a much more heavy duty watch. It has more of a tool-like appearance. Got this chunky bezel here, nice chunky crown, so you still do get a level of wearability out of this. Show you both side by side. Not much difference between the two. So this is purely subjective. You've got to choose what you like. I've got both in my collection and that's what I would do. I'd get both. Now I'm not saying go out and buy both, um, but you know, the question is which one's better. I don't think any one watch is better than the other in this particular case. Of course, $50 difference and that is just purely up to your budget. Of course, in the UK, and around the world take customs into consideration, which will significantly increase the price. But if you like the smaller details, I'd say the only thing this has got over the MM300 from San Martin is this has this black enamel dial uh, or this glossy black dial, which looks just a lot better. However, this has, um, you know, the 
Seiko-esque dial, so you really can't blame them for not using a black dial, they're using this grey dial. Um, but, you know, both are very, very close. Now, while you are talking about this, let's quickly jump over to the Sumos um, in the homage well. So the main ones that I want to talk about is, I think, the Steel Dive SD 1971. I have had a lot of them. Now, just to put it out there, the Steel Dive Sumo and the Addis Dive Sumo, they are exactly the same thing, same case. Of course, just one has Addis Dive on the logo. I think Addis Dive went a step forward and they got that... Um, save the ocean style dial which looks fantastic the bracelets are okay they're not the best um you know nothing like san martin quality but the price of those is around uh, i think 114 pounds so significantly cheaper around 150 dollars now is there a 50 dollar difference between uh the sumo from san martin or and the sumo from steel dive or Addis dive i'd say better bracelet um better hands better quality of hands slightly better dial even in the comparison that I did, it was a very tough call. But, you know, if you bring bracelets into it, for example, this Miltap bracelet, you know, you're looking at about £80, so well over $100, uh, then I'd say it's you can justify it very easily. I've got to bring it back here first and foremost. I used to be a spec chaser in the beginning when I started these homage watches. You know, it was all about specifications for me. Oh, that's got sapphire, that's got ceramic, that's got this, that's got this. But as I've kind of matured through the hobby, and I've said it on numerous different videos that it's not always about the specification. Sometimes it's more about the look for me. So what I'm getting at is first instance, go for what you like. If you like the look of it, go for it. You know, specs and everything else should be kind of secondary as long as it's not really poor and you're not paying more for the price. OK, if it's cheap and it's got the same specs, you know, but just not as well finished, it's entirely up to you. I have bought watches which are quite a bit more however um i like the look a lot better whether it's proportions whether it's the finishing uh, and i would pay a bit more for that quality uh, because you know as a reviewer you handle just so many watches um everything does get kind of boring so when something comes out which is just finished so much better and you think you know what i'll spend the 20 or 30 pounds or 50 pounds more just to get that in um because it just feels that much nicer but you know for the most part there's not that much difference between the watches. Okay, so now we've done that on the Sumo. Next one, let's have a look at the MM300s, which is the best one amongst them all. So the Steel Dive MM300, the issue with that is I've had loads of them that do have very, very inconsistent bezels. Their bezels are horrific. Some of them really bad, quite loose. You do get some good ones. Um, and, you know, the bracelet, again, isn't up to scratch. The case, however, is okay. It's not too bad. The dial's fine. Hands are fine. Uh, they use really good quality hands. The dials do have really good lube. Now compare that to Heimdallah. There's not much difference between the steel dive and the Heimdallah in terms of case. Heimdallah do have a slightly better bezel. However, they still suffer from a very inconsistent bezel. Uh, I think the mechanism they use is just wrong. Um, they've kind of mixed up the mechanism for a retention wire or a spring wire. And they've used a Seiko click spring. They don't work. One has, you know, jagged teeth on the inside of the bezel and the other is a click spring. So it's not going to be very smooth or very tactile rotation. It's going to sound quite messy, like a you know, salt and pepper grinder, basically. Now, the main two contenders for MM300s, you guys probably know how to say this, is, of course, the Proxima, okay, um, and the San Martin. Now, price on the uh, San Martin, as I said, $250. 187 pounds 190 whereas the proxima uh, is a bit cheaper at 150 so 200 dollars again a 50 dollar difference this is a very very tough call for me but again assess what do you want okay so if you want a mm300 homage the sbdx001 this is the closest thing to it it's got the thicker case monocoque con construction so this has also a very similar bracelet to the one that you see on the Seiko. You know, it's a long uh, faux three-link bracelet. Of course, the one on the Seiko will be much better. So if you want something uh, from a kind of purist perspective, or want something that looks like the SBDX, you would choose Proxima. But this, as I mentioned in the review, this is uh, more in line with the LX range. So if you want something that's just slightly more updated, you've got a thicker bezel, a different crown, and a slimmer case, Again, that's the choice you would make. The $50 difference doesn't come into it. It's because that's what you want. Um, 
which is a better made watch i'd say overall it would be the san martin but not by a lot uh, i think the bezel rotation is just a touch better than the proxima okay uh, the case finish is not better than proxima it's the same uh, of course the bracelet is much much better but what you can do with the proxima which i think you can do with the san martin as well i managed to source one of these um, bracelets you know from aliexpress and it's a ratchet extension so i'll link the store where you can get this one it's a bit pricey um but you know it's it's what you pay for for the whole look right so when i have this bracelet on i'll put this watch on this watch feels like an absolute beast of course as you can see i have modded it um i've got a few videos on how to do this proxima so between the two 50 dollar difference just use the subjective choices to make your decision ultimately what do you want to but yeah very tough choice between the two so now that we've got that out of the way what was the other question okay let's address the monsters so we had a new addition to the monster homage line we've got the c-stern and we've also got the heimdalla now somebody also put in um the monster homage from islander so i did have a quick look i've actually not seen that watch um and we'll go to the website and discuss that that so let's put the prices across on the table that is more v1 um you do have the islander logo uh you've got a very v1 dial so one thing that heimdall has got over seastern and over islander is they've got so many variants they knocked out just so many variants pvd this color dial that color dial frost dial yellow greens oranges everything now seastern is relatively new um like i said just a touch pricey than the heimdall but you know is it that much better so straight away i'd say look the hands are quite a lot better it's a metallic glossy sort of finish as you saw in the review now this is the gen 2 dial homage the only difference in this um as i can see is the pip on the seastern is a lot better it's integrated a lot nicer and whereas the and whereas the heimdall v2 it's still good it's actually not sitting as flush as it was on the on the version one but you know that subtle difference the season just has got much better finishing on there but it's a tiny tiny difference now the second thing is the text on the bezel heimdall did mess up i don't know if they have corrected this by now but you know that is somewhat anorexic compared to the other two but that's not an issue on the season all very uniform and very equal now season don't do as many variants but they do have a few variants that really do stand out this aquamarine somber style you also have a fully loom dial and you also have that save the antarctic version which i mentioned in the aliexpress video which looks fantastic um the other difference between the two is the bezel right both have really good bezel rotations the heimdeller is a lot more tactile you feel every click okay very precise and it does line up at the 12 o'clock but the seastern is a lot smoother i always prefer a smoother bezel just listen to this so not as tactile but feels so smooth um i'd definitely prefer this bezel over the heimdall but one thing heimdall has got you know everyone loves the logo that um shredded shark logo just suits the watch and they did really well with that logo so you know this is again a tough one what would i get if i want that just a few little touches that are better uh, i'll definitely go for the season but if i want the variance but if i want a lot more variety uh, i'd go for the heimdall like i said price difference you're looking 30 40 dollars max it's not too much so hopefully you know this does make the choice a little bit easier so the islander i don't know i think when we're talking at 100 and you know uh, 40 dollars if you really like that watch then of course go for it again which one initially impresses you and then take it from there so that's we've got the monsters out the way <clears throat> let's talk about the 6105s um so steel live sd 1970 this was the first watch that i bought from uh, aliexpress when i first got introduced to homage watches and the first kind of watch to feature on my channel and i believe i did the first video on youtube of this sd 1970 since then so many channels have covered this watch it's ever so popular um you know i'd say next to the like the sub homages etc i think is still equally as popular now steel dive give you 
such an amazing deal. You can get this watch for around £66, which is $100, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Now, where do the rest lie? I think everyone's done a 6105 homage. Like I said, bear in mind, Addy's Dive and this, more or less the same. I wouldn't touch it. Uh, Heim Dollar have also got one, which is just a bit more. So you're looking at maybe $130, $125. Um, by the way, this is the titanium version that I've got in hand. So uh, very light. It's the new one they did. Uh, and then you've got, um, you know, San Martin. You've got various others. Personally, I don't think you need any other homage because the only thing reason you'll buy it is because if you like, you know, that one thing or it'll be a subjective reason, you know, spec wise, this has got everything. The case is finished really nice on this. It's got ceramic bezel, you know, it's got this matte dial. It's got the traditional looks that you expect from 6105 homage. Um, it does have a flat crystal. You know, you've got a crown, which is set really nicely into the case, polished sides, brushed, whatever. Um, this is actually the version one. You don't, you can't get this again. Uh, it's got the polished edge on the coin edge bezel, slightly sloped, and the ones that they did after that were just a lot flatter uh, coin edge bezels. Now, there were quite a few in of inconsistencies in the QC of this watch. You know, back in the day when I got this, um, and since then when I've had any SD nineteen seventy, you know, it's a bit of a hit and miss with the bezel. But I think since then they have ironed that out. Um, they did do a slight change to a few different things. Now, Heimdallah. They just did different versions. So I think Heimdall did an aluminium bezel insert. They also did a ceramic, which gave you a more of a vintage look. But I think one thing that most of them missed out on was getting a domed and chamfered sapphire crystal. That's closest to the original as you're going to get. In fact, a very popular mod on these is to replace the crystal to a domed sapphire with a slightly large chamfer. Um, and it's, I think it's a 32 millimeter diameter for the sapphire, same as the Seiko Turtle. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it totally is dependent upon you, but you know, in terms of buying the steel dive, if you want a Captain William homage, you cannot beat this. The value for money on this watch is ridiculous. Forget the bracelet version as well. Go for a tropical or a waffle strap. Uh, and steel dive do provide a waffle strap as well with this. So it's a no brainer for me on that one. Very easy and simple. The only way you can go in my personal opinion now is if I bring in what I call the disruptors. The Merca um, Ocean Master Professional. I did a review on this uh, a while ago. I absolutely fell in love with this watch. I coined the term for it um, King Willard because it's just so much bigger, so much beefier, uh, amazing finishing. And I think they nailed this uh, so well when Merca made this chunky logo, big chunky markers, great looking hands. That red second hand versus the red text really amazing crisp bezel look at that one of the best bezel actions of felt uh you do have a you have a half loom bezel as well so the markers from here are loomed case they have done something different with the case where you'll see the slight lip here and they've put a polished edge that totally won me over um when i received this i actually absolutely love this watch you know being a massive dive watch fan and I'm sure anybody else who has this can relate. It's also very practical. It has been thought out well enough. When you unscrew that, you've got this red that appears, this color which tells you, warning, you need to screw your watch in. Lock on the crown. Um, and you've got this solid case back, screw down with a massive turtle on there. Merck had done this so, so amazingly well. But the unfortunate thing is, uh, they're hard to get. Uh, I think they've really sold out all the stock everywhere. They rarely get made again. Uh, I think as soon as they're made, they just sell out super, super quick. I have requested that Merca let me know when they get the green version because that is the one that I wanted originally. Couldn't get my hands on it. Um, but I have found a store on AliExpress that does do this black and orange version. And I think that is the next best thing. Striking colors, very consistent and everything else. Uh, it's a, I think it's a loom bezel. Um, and of course, similar loom from the zero to the 20, uh, black markers, black text with the orange, such an amazing contrast. Now that for me is a significant upgrade. That is a significant improvement. Just to have a look how the side of the case here flares out compared to that. Look at the highly polished edge, really fine brushing, finer than the one on the steel dive. Um, but, you know, they weren't that expensive as well. I remember I got a $50 discount code, so which would make this watch around £120, £150, pounds, if I'm not mistaken. 
around hundred eighty dollars. Uh, perhaps that was quite a while ago now. But on AliExpress, right now the store I've got it, they've got it at hundred and seventy pounds, which is about two hundred forty dollars, two hundred twenty dollars if I'm not, you know, if I got it right. Uh, so yeah, I think that is the only significant upgrade that you can do when looking at the six one hundred five, for example. Other than that, stick to the steel life. There's no reason to go away from it. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. <clears throat> Let's bring out the 6.2 mass. Again, another very popular question. So let's get the C-stern here. I've got the one from 54 and that is all I have. I did have the Heimdaller. I have also had the San Martin in hand. And in the comparison that I did with the San Martin, I believe it, it was a version three. Um, and for me, it felt like every time San Martin did an upgrade, it went slightly further away than what the 6.2 mass was. Now, there's a few different ways to look at this. Right? Again, I take that you know purist view on this 6.2 mass homage because for me, I, I'm a Seiko fan. And I wanted, the only reason I bought the Heimdall version that I had was because I liked the one from Seiko. So, of course, naturally, I want something closest to that. Now, the specs on the Heimdall and the San Martin, 50 mil log to log and a 41 millimeter diameter case way too big for that watch but i wear watches that are that size if that makes sense so it's based upon what watch you're trying to buy for me the two perfect examples 54 watch okay they have improved this now with a domed sapphire crystal and a ceramic bezel okay really nice case you know 37 38 mil sorry and like a 46 mil or 45 and a half mil log to log uh, hit that brief nailed it and for me this is what i love now obviously the new one is a bit pricey i did say that in the video even though you can get a 50 dollars discount now but bringing up the c stern um they fixed the date real issue that they had but just they've improved the case by so much and again i think significantly more than the first 60 uh, 54 watch 62 mass homage ceramic bezel you do have this box style crystal which is still low profile fully brushed case highlighted edges along those logs absolutely love this watch and i'll put it on leather strap just to you know get a different look out of it really nice bezel really nice crown what i do like on the 54 though i like that thicker crown slightly this really helps it grip now if you're somebody that does not give a damn about the original 62 mass you couldn't care less about the dimensions then i would say go for san martin that is the more refined watch uh, you know you've got a really nice bracelet nice case uh, you know you've got all the loom in the world really nice clasp etc but for me it's too far away from what i want so i wouldn't go for that but again it's down to identify what your need is so if you want a watch that is closest to the seiko and you're a fan of the 6217 and you want to watch the homage of that between what i've discussed definitely the season 133 pounds 170 dollars uh, maybe a bit cheaper i think that's a cracking deal it will come on a rubber strap whatever but i find for some strange reason between this captain willard and between the 62 mass i love them on rubber straps tropical straps like you can see here or uh or on of course a leather strap this one uh, that's my first 54 watch that i had and of course you can see a naughty naughty mod that's got the gen uh reissue dial on there love the looks of this watch but this is what i mean look how retro that looks it looks so close to the original and that is what i wanted that's what i desired but if you want something flashy really out there you know i'd go san martin still a very competitive price now one has just entered that has just really messed everything up uh, that is the tandorio now they're getting quite a bit of hype at the moment because the tandorio is coming in at 75 pounds a hundred dollars with a pt5000 movement that is absolutely crazy because they've bought that they've changed the dynamic quite a bit and uh, now again go back to what you want if you don't care about the you know this uh purest view and you know the 6217 is irrelevant to you you just want it because you like the looks uh, and the specs go for the tandorio hundred dollars pt5000 high beat movement um but the case and everything around it is the same as the heimdaller so but the good thing with this other case they are basic so you only need basic finishes you need polishing on the sides and brushing on the a face ceramic bezel decent rotation and you can get away with it which i think tandorio have a lot of positive reviews in fact on my facebook group a few guys have mentioned tandorio and they've bought a few of the watches from there so i'll definitely check that out tandorio also do the bliga 36 millimeter you know date just homage with a pt5000 for 
you know under hundred dollars as well so they definitely are a disruptor and that's something i would definitely look into so we got to put these watches away that's my you know last opinion on them and what do we have last but not least we have the c stern doxa i won't take too much time on this versus the tactical frog it's a no-brainer for a lot but there's still quite a lot of people that do prefer um the tactical frog if we take the bezel out of the equation for a minute i think between the features they kind of negate each other so you know what you have on the applied hour markers um you know but you got better loom on the c stern it's a bit closer to the original uh stuff like that i think the hands are a bit nicer you know the finishing uh is a bit nicer on this the crown bezel rotation are great uh the be the bracelet on maybe this tactical frog has probably gone up a bit due to um the screwing links but they still have got sort of half stiff links not fully independent on the beads of rice but it's this massive error again you know because they messed up with this so bad it's difficult to get away from like i said some people will like it and on the whole how much do i rotate my bezel how much do i use it i do not use it at all i use it like a fidget spinner if i'm bored i just sit there and do that and that's it throughout the day i've probably touched it once or twice but still it's in your mind that oh this is not right i do kind of like the shape of this bezel i like the shape of the case it's a lot thinner but it has to be the overall package and i think uh the c stern does do it so you know price wise not much difference between them c stern hands down okay that aside quick one about the subs uh someone did ask about the sub homages uh i don't have any with me except the c stern homage um so now i mean don't get it twisted it's not a c stern promotion so when it comes to sub homages san martin isn't the best uh it's really well finished it's up there don't get me wrong but uh, if you refer to like just one more watch jody's review on it he found the chronos was just finished that much better uh than uh the san martin especially chronos's latest versions you know without the date window i think the really nice rotating bezel and they've improved the on the fly adjustment this one which by the way has a really nice uh on the fly adjustment you'll be surprised how actually good it is uh, and how proper it is if that makes sense good bezel good specs um again everything else is really good on there but i don't think the san martin is that much more expensive than this uh, but they do have quite a few sharp edges the case is sharp on the san martin uh, the bracelet is slightly edgier than on this one and i think chronos would be a good contender because they do the pt5000 um movement in their sub homage and that's only 170 so a little over 200 dollars if you are considering them this one will be the cheapest and and i think the finishing can definitely keep up with the chronos uh, and the san martin but it just has an nh35 so again if you are in the market for a sub i would consider this just cleaning everything i would consider this uh, i would also consider the chronos if you want to step up if you really want a really really kind of good quality sub homage and just be done with it you know a really good gerald gentle watch uh you know this is how much now uh, this is how little i probably know about watches on the whole you know i know about seiko and and whatever i talk about um i started to google it i don't know who gerald Genta is what those kind of watches are and of course after a couple of minutes i clocked it you know it was it's like you know the royal oak style homages the audemars style watches etc so so i get the brief um so he he's not happy with san martin nautilus uh and you know the royal oak homages out there are a bit of a disappointment i get it but they're very cheap you know caddison do them uh, and the other brands that i've done them they are quite cheap they're around a hundred dollars i think 120 dollars at the most uh and i get it it's not the best not what you're looking for I have come across a brand which is called Age Losa or Age Locker. I don't know how you exactly say it. Uh, if you say Age Locker, it kind of looks like a play on Foot Locker. I'll show you the store now. It's worth checking out. They are quite a bit more expensive. Um, you're looking at $500 watches. However, look at the reviews. Uh, I did look at the watches and something just stopped me because, number one, it's a bit expensive, but I thought, can this really be that good? Because the reviews are more or less five-star, all of them people are rating those watches really highly and they've paid quite a bit they've paid san martin money if not a bit more and they're all very happy so definitely there's something there in that watch so if you want that style of watch uh, a gerald gento style of watch definitely check out age locker or age losa um 
I don't really know about the history about it and they do have some text there. They've got some description about who they are. I don't look too far into them because it's on AliExpress. A lot of them are just made up stories. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the brand. I think that will hit your brief uh, slightly and you know give you what you're looking at. But bear in mind, they do want a fair bit of money as well. Uh, so that's it, guys. Bit of a long video, but hopefully I've tried to answer all your questions. Um, and that's made it easier to make the choices that you want to make. Uh, and... Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.